Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and if you're new here, welcome. Super happy to have you here with us today. Today we are going to be harvesting tons of stuff out of the garden. We did get frost this past weekend on both Friday and Saturday. So many of the plants in the garden have been damaged by frost, the squash, the pickling cucumbers, the corn is probably next. We are supposed to get frost again this coming up weekend. So I really need to get in here and harvest anything that will be damaged by the frost. Fortunately, the frost that we had this past weekend just kind of killed off the top leaves on the plants and not down deep into where the squash were lying. When it comes to squash, they will get damaged by frost. They're still totally edible. They might even store for you for a little while, but they won't store over the long term because those areas where frost has hit will end up rotting. Over here, I'm just gonna give you a peek at what frost damage looks like if you're not familiar with it. If you're lucky enough to live in an area where you don't get frost, this is what frost damage looks like. And as you can see, all the leaves that are on the top have been damaged, but down underneath, still nice and green, which means that the fruit itself, as you can see down there, there's a baby blue Hubbard squash, has not been damaged, thank goodness. So this, this is actually what frost damage will look like by usually the end of the first day that the damage has been done, but definitely by the second day. It's pretty crazy. The Georgia candy roaster really got hit, but fortunately, again, not down to the skin of the squash. That's so great. All of the cabbage, the collards, the kale, carrots, all the root vegetables, those can stay in the ground. They can handle some frost. Uh, carrots actually don't do well with frost. Here, let me show you. Carrots are fine, anything that is below the ground, but anything that's up like that, if you start getting hard frosts where your ground is freezing, this part will get damaged and won't store really well. So I'll leave you these in the ground until we are um, at the point of risking a hard frost, and then I'll get these harvested. I have got to pick my cabbages. That is just gonna have to happen too. So maybe we'll end up doing that today as well because they're splitting and I don't wanna get, this is fine like this cause I can peel these leaves back. But if there's any major splits in it, you can still use them, but they just don't store well. Really, really, really beautiful looking cabbages this year though. This one is Copenhagen Market cabbage. This is one of my favorite cabbages to grow. I also have a few of the Red Acre. This one, the purple cabbages that I have won't get harvested until October. Um, they'll get much bigger than this. You can see how this zucchini plant that's in here, it's all surrounded by other plants and it actually held up to this frost pretty well. Just a little bit on the very tips of the leaves like that so smoky out today. We have lots of smoke blowing in from fires in Hope, in uh, Manning Park, and then I think even some smoke blowing up from California. And then over here where the pickling cucumbers are. Is that good corn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's sweet. Yeah. That's good. These are pickling cucumber vines and all the vines are completely toast, but the pickles themselves are still fine. So we'll go along and pick whatever it is that is left and then rip the rest of the vines out along with all of these weeds and get these beds ready for winter. The zinnia can hold up to a little bit of frost, thank goodness, because they are so beautiful. I'll be really sad when these are done. Another week or two probably. So over here is our corn patch. Oh wow, look at that. I did plant some squash in here and there is actually a squash vine growing right up. And there's even a squash. <laughs> Little tiny a squash, <laughs> yeah. And then over here, so the frost did get in over here as well, but not nearly as bad as the other part of the garden. There's a little squash down there we'll be picking. But I did show you this in the last video, how the blackbirds had come in and munched on some of the corn in here. So we are going to pick all of this corn so I don't lose any more. It's too bad, I wish I could give it at least another couple of days, but. I hate that it's planted so close together. <laughs> it is close together, isn't it? Oh, yeah, this is... oh, look, whoa. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if this is the pink popcorn. No, it doesn't look like it. But, then what but I think we'll be able to save this because we'll just cut off this part. This is all yellow. 
Like yeah, this, is, this looks really nice. Okay, so we can just pull the whole cob off. There. Okay, we'll make a pile over here. I am so excited. Oliver just picked this. Look at that corn. It's beautiful. So cool. It's very exciting. Okay, let's get all this picked. Anything that's super small, we'll just leave just because it's not really worth it. And then if the birds get it, then we feed the birds. And if they don't, then we'll pick it in another week. Okay. That's so pretty. This is a little buttercup squash. Isn't that cute? I did not expect to get any squash out of this patch because this patch was really damaged by frost on June 20th. And, um, but I do think there are a few hiding in here. I just stepped over this one and broke the stem off. When you are picking squash, try to keep the stem at least a couple of inches long for curing, but that makes me happy. These are one of my favorite squash. One of my honeybees. Hello, sweetie. Apparently the wasps, to show you over here have also found the corn. So we're going to have to be very careful anywhere where the birds have peeled back the corn, the wasps are eating. Try not to stand on these beans, okay? Yeah. Look at that. Ugh, that's horrible. To say that I am not a fan of the wasp would be a gross understatement. I do not mind honeybees. I do not like wasps. Oh, look at this. Yes, this is one of those ones. I didn't think I planted these this year. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh no. <laughs> I just did the exact thing I just told you guys not to do and I broke the stem off. This is one of my favorite pumpkins. It's called a peanut pumpkin. And it's super sweet. And I did not think I planted any this year. That's so awesome. This is another favorite of mine. This is a Cinderella pumpkin. If you have been around for any of my past squash harvests, you will know this is a very tiny Cinderella pumpkin, but it is a Cinderella pumpkin and I consider that a win. So we have a lot of corn left to pick, but there's so many wasps in there that we've decided to wait until tonight when the wasps are all gone before we pick the rest. But even just this little tiny pile right here, is pretty fantastic considering how cold the spring was. And crazily enough, this one that Oliver just picked was off of these little tiny corn plants over here. And then these ones over here that are well over seven feet tall, these ones I started in the greenhouse and then transplanted out here. And these tiny little ones actually are producing really nice cobs. So that's crazy. That is beautiful. I ate the first corn. They're basically, it's almost their there. time is over. These little tiny ones that are down here are actually really yummy too. They are. Their yeah. time is over. Almost. Yeah, their time. their time has come to an end. These are one of my favorites too. Look at that cutie, baby blue Hubbard. Georgia candy roaster, such an awesome squash. Last year I did a taste test video where I compared a bunch of different squashes and the Georgia candy roaster was definitely, I think it might've even been my top as far as sweetness and density of flesh. I really like to have a nice dense, not super dry, um, and really sweet uh, flesh for my squash. And these ones were fantastic. This one's a fun one. This one's called a Turk's Turban squash. Isn't that beautiful? Whoa! You have a lot of I do, more, way more than I thought we were gonna get. These are my little sugar pumpkins. So as you can see, they are not ripe yet, but I will be able to put these in a warm, sunny window in my kitchen and these will ripen. It might even take up to a month, but they will ripen. Mom, yes. I was like, ooh, I clean this and then look. <laughs> oh dear, it's all rotten. 
I do have several videos on growing squash and different varieties that I like and different harvests that we've done over the years and I'll make sure that I make a little playlist and link that for you up here if you would like to look at that and learn about growing squash. We might get up to a third of the squash that we normally get but I consider this a huge win because like I said in the spring most of the squash plants were frozen right down to just one or two little tiny leaves and I didn't think we were going to get any so this is pretty amazing it's really heavy yeah okay I will do a final tally on those but now now I need to go down and open up the high tunnel so it's not stifling hot when I go in to pick all the tomatoes because we have a huge tomato harvest to do too today. It's crazy harvest day today. It is 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the high tunnel right now, 45 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna let that cool off before we go harvest those tomatoes. What else do I have to do? I feel like we're making some progress. So this was a little experiment. I planted some turnips about four weeks ago now. And look at that. So this is completely gonna change the way I grow turnips from now on. Normally the turnips that I grow in the spring for harvesting in the fall to go in the pan or in the root cellar are huge and when they get really big they kind of get woody they're much better when they're smaller like this so i am going to now start planting a crop for turnips in august for harvesting for storage and i think that's going to work a lot better and these greens are really delicious too the bees are trying to get them oh yeah i see that so definitely these ones are way better, hey? The peaches and cream one? Ah, oh, that's what it was called. Yeah, peaches and cream. That looks fantastic. That's perfect. So we'll definitely grow those ones again, hey? They look so pretty. Yeah. Pretty. All told, there's 68 squash, and I feel like that's pretty good. Where did I put my tripod? I think I left it down in the garden. So that's really not bad, considering I was planning on getting exactly zero. So I'm happy with that. Just realized that I forgot my harvest bucket over here. Better bring an extra one too, just in case. Oops. Not bad so far. So I wanted to show you a couple of my favorites. Um, these ones here, so these ones are called Arbison beefsteak, obviously not a huge tomato for a beefsteak, but this is a really good one for the Northern Garden and they're all super uniform like this, decent flavor and the plants are really, really productive. So that's a really good one. And this is another one. This one is called Bull's Heart. Isn't that beautiful? So this one is actually an early ripener. It's quite a soft tomato and a really good slicer for sandwiches. So this will be another one that I'll grow next year. I always throw cherry tomatoes in my sauces because they're usually so full of flavor and they're quite acidic. So they make a really nice sauce. These ones are pink Berkeley tie-dye. Aren't they gorgeous? These ones are from wild boar farms and um, they grow all kinds of kind of exotic looking tomatoes. And flavor-wise, these ones are pretty good and they're really pretty because they're striped on the inside too. Definitely better. Okay, I think that is it. Let's just get these up onto the, um, up here and then we can grab the wagon. Do you want to grab the wagon? Oh uh, no, you, this one's good. You can carry it up to the house? Okay, you are stronger than me. We have this thing full of tomatoes and then the big box 
that Claire brought up was half tomatoes, half peppers. It's totally okay to harvest tomatoes like this in a bin like this or a big basket. Just make sure that when you get them up to the house that you do lay them out. Um, if you're not gonna be able to process them right away, one or two deep and that's it because otherwise the weight of the tomatoes on the top will crush and bruise your tomatoes underneath. So that is what I'm gonna go up to the house and do right now. In my next video, we're going to be harvesting all of the cabbage and I was taught a new way by my friend Tim who I've mentioned here several times. I'm gonna, going to start calling them Tim's tips because he always gives me lots of great tips for the garden. So um, I'm gonna be sharing with you the tip that he shared with me about how to uh, put your cabbage up in the root cellar so that they last all winter and that will be in the next video and then i'm also going to be showing how i preserve cabbage both through putting them in the root cellar canning them and uh, making sauerkraut out of them so that will be a video that you can look forward to in the next i would say week for sure because i have to get all of these cabbage out of the garden and into the root cellar all right that is it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it and i will see you again in the next one bye Are you gonna come up honey let's go Watch out for the bumblebees here, Kay, because there's lots of bumblebees on the mint.